Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be going over something I call texture time travel. Great Scott. One of the most important factors whenever you're researching uh, doing some type of artwork is observation. So what I'm always trying to do is I'm trying to observe the world around me and try to come up with like a good strategy on how I can internalize that information and recreate that in CG. Making something look not CG is trying to add the level of depth that you see in reality. Like say you have a concrete wall. When it's first created will be its time of creation. Then at some point in that timeline is gonna be the time that it was photographed. At the time of photographing, it's gonna really inform you about how old that object is and where in the world it fits. In that storytelling timeline, you gotta think, this wall was created, so it was brand new, it was bare wall, and at some point it was painted after that, probably shortly after it was created. And then it would go through levels of weathering, human interaction, like graffiti, or like people touching the wall, or breaking it, or things like that. Did it go through a level of repair as well? So was it an old wall that had been uh, patched and uh, things like that? And those like levels of detail will add story elements to your scene and your set, and will make it make the world feel more alive because a lot of times what i see texturing artists when they're first starting out they kind of just just use the generators and the smart materials and painter and things like that just kind of all over the place and they just like throw grunge on a lot of things and dirt if you really want it to sit in your environment and feel like it's a real place you really have to think about wh where is this wall like wh what has it been through like what type of environment is it living in so for an example, a place like the movie Dune. Now, that's a planet that has almost no water at all. So you're not going to see very much water erosion. You're not going to see water leaks. Um, you're not going to see like rust runoff and things like that. So that's something to like, keep in mind whenever you're doing your texturing process. Like, oh yeah, these stone slabs wouldn't have any water leaking because there isn't any water. So you would have to think more about like it's sand erosion. Things would feel dusty and kind of like earthy tones and stuff like that. You wouldn't have a lot of those like darker, wet, rusty tones that you would get from like water runoff from metal and stuff like that. Here's a real world example of like me observing this uh, in my own life. So I used to work at Blue Sky Studios and it was in this building that had three levels of parking garage, maybe four. And then there was three levels of businesses. So there was like investment bank and we were on the very top level. It was this big, huge old building. As I would go down this staircase every day when I would go down to my car, because it was faster than the elevator, so I always took the staircase. When I come out the first door from my studio and start walking down the staircase, the very first level had a lot of paint that was kind of bubbling off on the walls. You know, it was kind of like, it was bubbling and kind of peeling in areas. And I thought about that when I was going down, because I noticed that as I would go down in levels, the paint on the wall would change. It wouldn't be bubbly like that. So I was thinking, I was like, oh, that's probably because humidity is rising through this uh, stair shaft um, because it's open to the air. It's not air conditioned in the area because the door, the very top level door was like open to the roof. The bottom three levels were open to the parking garage, which is just open air. You know, the winter and the summer weathering would just go through that stair shaft all year long. As I would move down the levels and go down to like the level two, level three of the businesses, the walls uh, paint and uh, quality improved by quite a bit. I thought that was really interesting. I was like, and then I was trying to think about it. I was like, oh, that must be it's closer to the air conditioning system. And there's more of like this air buffer between from above and the unconditioned air from below. So there's like a little bubble uh, that was kind of like maintaining these walls a little bit better. And you got to think maintenance men too. Like if you had people walking from level two to level three or level one to level two, et cetera, you would probably want to maintain that area a little bit better just because there's businesses there. And as you would go down further and further and further, the quality of these walls would just drop dramatically. The, the very bottom level or the one right after that, there wasn't even paint on the walls because I guess the maintenance men were just like, you know what, screw it. No one's actually walks all the way down here. So these are the types of things you need to like keep in mind when you're trying to think about environmental effects. That is what I mean when I'm talking about art time travel. It's really thinking about the storyline of an object. Thanks so much, guys. And if you like this video, please give me a like. It helps the algorithm. And subscribe if you want more videos like this. And I will see you guys in the next one.